Over the last two years, I've covered a huge range of fiddling, fixing and upgrading on this, my 2011 4.4 TDV8 Range Rover Vogue, ranging from the smallest of titivations Hello, yeah. to the deepest of arm swallowing repairs. However, through all of this, I've failed to address what is perhaps the L322's biggest flaw, rust. So in this episode, it's time to rectify that situation and take a look at her crusty bits. Unless you've been a Sam's Motor Machine follower for quite some time now, you may not recognise the surroundings I'm in right now. And even if you have been following me for more than the last year or two, you may not recognise these surroundings immediately as it does look a little bit different than last time I was here. But where is here? Well, me and the Range Rover have both returned to our native land of the UK temporarily, just for the Christmas break, and I thought whilst I was here, with the use of this beautiful workshop that my brother and I built a few years ago, we might as well get some big jobs done on the Range Rover that I've been putting off for quite a long time. So. Let's get cracking. So one of the really big jobs I've been looking forward to doing on the Range Rover for a long time now is the under seal and rust treatment of a certain few areas of the vehicle. Some of you L322 owners out there will know what I'm talking about and it's the sills, it's the rear arches and it's actually the rear subframe as well that are these key areas that we need to protect on our L322s to stop the vehicles from rusting away. Unfortunately, unlike the P38 that came before it, the L322 does suffer with a bit of rust, even on models as new as these 2011 and 12 models, they still can be affected pretty badly by rust in the sills and the rear arches. I'm hoping that's not the case of mine, otherwise this video is probably gonna turn into about a 10 part series. But fingers crossed, it's just surface rust and I'll be able to treat it and prevent any more rust from developing with the products that I've got here, which I'm gonna show you now. So the first step in our multi-stage process, which we're going to be doing today, is going to be involving this NutraRust 661. Now this is a product that you apply directly to surface rust, and it actually reacts chemically with the ferrous uh, corrosion that you get on iron and steels, um, and it kind of forms like a, an impermeable uh, acrylic layer on top. So it basically leaves you with a sealed layer, which is going to prevent any more rust from happening over time. And then it also acts as a primer for you to paint over the top or apply an undercoat like we're going to be doing today. Now Neutralust is actually a British company and it's made in the UK by what I understand is basically a one-man band. Um, and it says on the bottle here it's actually approved by NATO and the Ministry of Defence. So you know it's a fairly serious product when you see that on the label. Um, so I guess if it's good enough for the MOD to protect their Land Rovers from rusting away, uh, it must be good enough for me. The next step is going to be spraying on this Lanagard, which is basically a surface protectant and a anti-corrosion, so a corrosion inhibitor. Now, Lanagard is another British product, and as you might be able to tell from the name, it's actually formulated using lanolin, which comes from sheep's wool, believe it or not. And lanolin is one of those amazing natural materials that somehow has properties that far exceed a lot of uh, man-made products as well. So it's extremely water resistant, extremely resistant to chemicals like acids and salt and things that you find on the road. And it's even resistant to pressure washing as well. And even though it does all that, because it's biologically based, basically comes from a sheep, it's completely biologically degradable as well, biodegradable. So it's not gonna cause any kind of biological disasters when it gets washed off your car on the road, which is good. So Lanagard have provided me with two types of their product. This is a spray, it's kind of a liquid as you guys can hear. And they've also given me this tub of Moto Grease as well, which is uh, again, the same stuff made from sheep's lanolin. Um, and it's basically a concentrated protectant, anti-corrosive and lubricant. So we can use this basically in a lot of places you might otherwise use grease. Being that this is formulated from lanolin, I was expecting it to have a bit of a strange smell, and it does to be fair. It's quite weird, it sort of smells a bit like a stables, but it's not anywhere near as bad as I thought it was gonna be when I first uh, read about this stuff. So uh, yeah, slightly interesting smell, but not too bad. So first thing we need to do is take off these plastic sills. Uh, we're gonna start on this left-hand side, and there are about 10 plastic uh, clips holding it in on the bottom, and I think behind the door as well, when you open the door. Um, so let's see if we can get a few of these out. So underneath the truck, we've got a row of these uh, trim clips going in from the front all the way along to the back. We're gonna try and pull these out. And uh, I think there are some more hidden behind the doors as well. Oh, 
Oh. The muck. The wasn't doing that. Just filled it up. But you can see where that would rust though, because it's kind of. This end's definitely very clean. See, that's both sills removed on the both sides of the Range Rover here, and amazingly, it's in pretty good condition. Um, as I say, I've seen quite a few of these cars with really bad rust starting in this corner here um, and traveling all the way down the, the sill here. As you guys can see, with a bit of a clean up, this still even has its original paint on there as well, so pretty good. The only area that might need a touch of paint is on both sides, just this very top corner here where it meets the sill, uh, where, the, where the arch meets the sill here. It's just starting to lose a bit of paint there and looking a little bit worse for wear, but really not too bad. So I think the plan will be we'll clean these up both sides, we'll sponge it down, get it nice and spick and span, remove any muck that's behind this arch liner, and then uh, basically on the sills we're just going to apply the liner guard um, as an extra layer of protection over the top. So it really doesn't need any uh, any additional paint or anything on there. So yeah, good news. Hopefully your guys' trucks look as good as this one does. And this, guys, is the amount of muck that was stuffed up behind the plastic sill cover on just one side of the Range Rover. Incredible. It's no wonder they rust. And while I was starting to remove the rear arch liners, my brother got to work scrubbing up the plastic sill covers ready to go back on. Look, good as new. And with the arch liner removed, we can get a look at the steel of the wheel arch itself, which, truth be told, is actually looking pretty good. The surface rust towards the front of the arch is definitely a shot across the bows though, and left untreated, it could definitely turn into something much more serious. So I started off by scraping around with a screwdriver to remove all the flaky paint that had failed. On mine, it was mainly around the front area of the wheel arch, but there were a few smaller areas dotted around the arch. Once I was happy that I wasn't going to blow through the steel work, I grabbed the grinder and the wire wheel of death, and not forgetting my eye protection, I cautiously began cleaning up the wheel arch. So you can see guys, after a quick attack with the wire wheel, we can see a few areas where the uh, original coating has started to fail and just started to get this surface rust in here, which is exactly where we want to get our rust converter and uh, to convert all that into nice unreactive surface. And another really com common area for them to rust is this, uh, just the inside lip of this wheel arch here, which you can see I've just buzzed back a bit. We'll give that another coat of rust converter, a bit of paint on there and that will look good as new. But yeah, overall not too bad, but you can definitely see how this could easily develop into proper full-blown rust and you'd have an issue where you'd need to start welding it, so definitely a good time to be sorting this. Once the wire brushing was done, I sprayed on some cleaning foam and gave it a sponge down to make sure the surface was nice and clean and ready for the Nutra rust to bond onto it. I then used the handy dandy pump up spray bottle to give it a rinse off, Amazon link in the description for that one, and then dried it off ready for coating. Next, I dispensed a small amount of the Nutrarust 661 into a container and I began painting it on. 
It starts off looking a little bit like PVA glue, and it seems to coat the steelwork pretty well. So I set about coating all of the areas where the original finish had failed and surface rust was showing. I didn't coat the entire surface as there's really not much point in putting this stuff on top of already good paint. From what I understand, it actually needs surface rust underneath it to react with and bond properly. So putting this on a good surface could actually hurt your overall protection, as we're going to be overcoating the whole arch later with Lanigard spray. I did three coats in total, leaving around 15 minutes between coats, and then I left it to dry. As it dries, you can see the surface rusted areas reacting, turning blue and then finally black, and elsewhere the Nutra rust simply dries to a clear acrylic finish. The other side was a similar story, requiring wire wheeling, cleaning, and then finally coating. I'd say the right hand side on my car was probably the worst, with the area behind the fuel filler neck being particularly heavily surface rusted. This is probably due mostly to the huge amount of soil and dirt that had accumulated there over the years. So with the arches coated nicely and drying, it was time to head down into the pit to tackle the underside of the Range Rover. So you join me down here in the pit beneath the beast. It's so nice to have this facility. Uh, almost makes me want to move back to the UK just so I can use this workshop again, but we're going to have our own one in Ireland at some point soon, hopefully. Anyway. The reason I'm down here is I want to apply some more of this Nutra Rust product, the 661, onto everything basically that I can see that's rusty under here. Um, well, not rusty, but surface rusty. So these lower arms, I might as well coat them. They're probably not going to ever rust through, but you know why not smart it up a bit under here? Um, and then I'm going to try and get to basically every part of the subframe that I can see uh, to try and coat it with the Nutra Rust. Um, I've just been under here for a few minutes attacking everything that I can get to with this wire brush and knocked a fair bit of uh, loose surface rust and old old paint off um, and yeah basically it's going to see how much we can coat from this position here cover as much of it as we can um, and then tomorrow once this is all dry coat everything with the Lanigard. What we're doing here with the neutral rust and the Lanigard on top of it is almost uh, double protection in theory, you could just put Lanigard straight onto the rust, um, but I think it's probably better to treat it first, make sure it's stopped in its tracks with neutral rust, and then we'll seal it all in and protect it from further damage with Lanigard. So I think that should be a pretty good duplex coating, as they call it. Neutral has actually supplied me with a one litre bottle of this stuff. Um, and so far from, from, from how it's sort of covering, I think that's way too much for one vehicle. Unless you're, in, in, unless you're sort of intending on dipping the whole vehicle in it, um, I think you could probably easily do two or three vehicles with that one litre bottle. But they do also do a 250ml bottle as well, so that's probably a bit more sensible for uh, one vehicle. So there we go, I've coated pretty much everything I can under here, easily. Um, I don't think I've covered the entire subframe, I've probably only covered about 70% of it at best. Um, the part of it that's obstructed by above the diff here, impossible to get to with a brush, and there are also some other bits around the air springs and towards the back that I haven't got to yet, but um, I think I've probably covered most of the worst areas which uh, have the sort of surface rust um, appearing. I don't actually know where on the subframes these cars are but worse for rust, you know, where are the areas that they actually fail and that they fail MOTs on. Um, I do know though that Ben from Ben's Garage actually had his TD6, his old Range Rover L322 fail its French inspection um, because of rusty sub subframes. So maybe if Ben's watching he can tell us where exactly it failed, um, you know, where the rust was on the subframe. But um, hopefully this will extend the life of this subframe. I want to see another. 100,000, 200,000 miles out of this L322, even if I'm not doing them myself. Um, so this is kind of just after I've applied it, you can see it looks kind of white there. In some areas it's going a little bit blue, which is the first stage of it uh, reacting with the rust. So we'll come back in the morning, have a look at this, and we'll see what it looks like. I've just had a chance to fully harden. 
So we're now on to day two of this job. Uh, it's approximately 24 hours after I applied for the uh, Nutrirust 661 onto the Range Rover. As you guys can see, it's done the job. Um, in all the areas where we had that uh, surface rust starting to appear, like here, um, it has converted it and turned it nice and black and converted that surface rust into a kind of a hard, almost like an enamel. So that's now laid down the perfect base for us to throw our lana guard or your, your undercoating of choice on top of that um, to complete our protection of the wheel arches. So I think my plan with the lana guard is basically going to be to use the moto spray, which is the kind of fluid stuff um, on, the, on the larger areas, so the main part of the wheel arches. Uh, we'll apply using this spray bottle and we might try out this uh, secondary one they've given us. Um, and also use this uh, fine tipped sprayer uh, to actually insert that into any channels or openings we can to kind of do some, uh, some cavity wax almost. Um, and then I think my plan with the grease, which is this stuff, which is a lot thicker obviously than the, the spray, is to uh, paste this on fairly heavily in those areas where we've got that uh, initial surface rust in the wheel arches and also around the inside of the lip of the wheel arches themselves as well. because I think that should give even more protection than just a thin coating of, of Lanigard. Um, so yeah, let's put some of this into a spray bowl and we'll see how we get on. And that's one coat done. It really is very, very quick with this spray gun. And the fact that it's so thin, it just covers really, really nicely. So it's got a faintly sheepy kind of smell, but very, very faint. And I think with this, it's mixed with some kind of solvents. So it kind of smells a bit more like, uh, you know, solventy paint thinners, that kind of thing, rather than sheep buff. So not too bad. Anyway, I'll just get my head in here, check that we've got everything covered, which it looks like we do. Make sure the inside of the lip everywhere is covered, which it looks pretty good. And that's pretty much that. You guys can see how quickly and easily I managed to cover the underside of this Range Rover using the spray bottle. I basically coated everything steel that I can see, front subframe, rear subframe, chassis rails that are exposed to undersides of the sills, both sides, and rear control arms, and a, and a few of the exposed uh, suspension arms on the front as well, because why not? Um, so probably less than five minutes and I've given the underside of the Range Rover a pretty good coating. I think what we'll do next is we'll switch to the small probe nozzle and then we'll see if we can stick it in a few holes in the chassis here. Um, anywhere we can basically get it inside and see if we can do some internal coating of some of these channels or box sections. So yeah, let's give it a go. So there we go, we've attached our little probe nozzle onto the existing uh, squeezy bottle. We're basically just gonna stick this in every hole we can find and squirt our sheep juice inside it. So here we go, for example, chassis rail. We can Feed that in as far as it will go. Just 
squirt loads in there. And in many ways, this internal coating is actually much more important than the external coating because a lot of these sections and chassis often find they rust away from the inside first. And there are also, importantly, holes that are perfectly sized in the seals themselves where we can insert our nozzle. And just absolutely coat the inside of this seal section as well. Massively important for long term rust proofing. So, once the initial spray coating had had a bit of time to flash off, I grabbed the Lanagard Moto Grease and started slathering it on pretty thick in the areas that are usually known for having problems on the L322. I paid particular attention to the inside of the wheel arch lip and the area at the front of the arch where we had that big patch of surface rust. Should last forever now. And with that, the L322 should be protected from the worst elements that the west coast of Ireland can throw at her. As these cars age, more and more of them are succumbing to the dreaded tin worm, with a whole secondary industry popping up to supply repair panels and welding services. If you love your L322 as much as I do and want to preserve it for the years to come, I implore you to follow a similar process to what I've done here. That is, if it's not too late already. So as you guys can see from this B-roll that I've no doubt got running over the top of this section, um, the Lanagard and Nutra Rust went on together really, really well, and the finish and the protection level we've got on the Range Rover now is second to none. That should really be good at least for another couple of years before I even have to look at it again, and then when I do, it's likely that all I have to do is give it another top up with the Lanagard on top just to keep it nice and fresh and protected. The spray version of the Lanagard, as you saw, was particularly easy to put on, uh, really, really quick to get a really good, uh, nice, even, light coating on everything. But the thicker grease product is actually really good as well. For areas like the sills where you want a really nice thick layer of protection, uh, this stuff's really, really nice. So I had two litres of the Lanagard Moto Spray. I managed to do the L322 with that, and I actually gave my brother's Volvo XC70 a complete coating with the grease and the Lanagard Spray as well. And I still got about a third of a bottle left and about a third of a tub of uh, grease as well. So you could probably do three cars, I reckon, with this kit very easily. And again, with the Neutral Rust 661, I've got more than half a bottle left here. So a little goes a really long way with these products. But overall, I'm really happy with all of these products and happy to recommend them to you guys. I'll leave links in the descriptions below. Please do go and check them out. If you've got a car that you think needs protecting, there really is no better time than now to get it ordered and get it started, get that process started. So anyway guys, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you enjoyed it hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys again in the new year. Cheers!